Um, so welcome to today's uh, DT session in our meetup series. And today we are going to be exploring journey mapping tools and how you can apply it towards your business processes in understanding the journey of your customer as they interact with you. So I'm sure my face is a bit familiar because I led last week's session um, with Kelvin. And um, I know a lot of you are wait waiting for our workbooks um, and the slides we used, and we are working on that to share. So I just want to say that in case it might be something in the comments because we've gotten a few questions about it. Um, so at this point, I'll just let Kelvin introduce himself, then I would, and then we would kick off. So Kelvin, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelvin Porte. I'm a CN analyst at IC. Um, IC assets managers and yeah so I'm excited to be today's meeting we'll clearly be looking at how to use the journey map um, my section of the, the presentation will be focused on how to practically develop a journey map so watch out for it Brian over to you awesome thank you Kelvin yeah and I'm Brian so I am currently a senior founder of uh, Green Hopper we are an auto tech technology company focusing on making transportation experiences more sustainable in Africa and being a leader when it comes to the journey of transitioning to greener mobility. So I use a lot of DT in, in my company with my team and excited to share more on how it's been an incredible tool for us in growing and in building our model. So yeah, our content structure is going to be as follows. We are going to introduce ourselves to journey maps and talk about the relevance and inspiration behind the value of journey maps for businesses. We are going to look at what is a journey map, its definition and the structure of a journey map in terms of how you plot it out, um, how journey maps have been implemented and have worked successfully for really large companies such as Spotify, which I'm sure probably half of us on this call use. And then Kelvin will take it off and go into more practically how journey maps can be implemented, do a live demo, creating a journey map with all of us on the call. And then finally look towards the benefits of journey mapping as well. So as I love to do, I'm going to start with some interesting quotes, two interesting quotes. The first one is from Albert Einstein. He says, you can't use an old map to explore a new world, right? You can't use an old map to explore a new world. And then the next one, <laughs> It's from nowhere, but I thought it was really fun when I was doing my research and I saw in the stage of all the maps in the world, the only one I will follow is the map to your heart. So again, this is a bit more tangent, but it's all going to come together nicely. So we, we looked at two quotes, right? You can use an old map to explore a new world. And also the only map I want to follow is the map to your heart. And the reason why we looked at it is because of purpose, right? So purpose is very important when it comes to the process of journey mapping. I'm happy you're picking some lines. And the reason is even if you cared about someone and you wanted to impress them, or if you found yourself in an industry and you wanted to effectively work there or implement a new solution, you would always have to know what is after that person's heart in order to satisfy them. So that's where purpose really comes in for journey maps. And that's how it ties into those codes as well. So when it comes to consumers and we're doing this, uh, preparing for this presentation, Kelvin made a really, a quote, which I really loved. And he said, every customer goes through a journey to reach the goals, right? It's very simple, but also felt it was very profound because think about it in everything we do, we set goals for ourselves. And then we put behind those goals, a plan to achieve them. So imagine you wanted to travel to visit your family for the holidays, you set a goal. And now you start thinking, am I going to be working with a travel agency? Am I going to be doing this by myself? Would I need leave days? Do I have a suitcase that can accommodate the clothes I need? Would I stay with my family or would I stay with the hotel? By doing all of this, you now plan the actual journey you take to the goal. But none of that work will be done if you didn't have something in mind that you wanted to achieve. The same with getting ready for a presentation. Like today, I'm also at an event for African Women Amplify, which is going great. And in getting towards this event, I had to decide it's going to be a very hot day, but I kind of have to look formal. So how do I pull it all together? How do I dress for this major presentation? I'd consider the location, consider what was in my closet. Do I need to get something new? This whole process of what is the journey I'm going to take to be ready, right? I ended up putting together a t-shirt and then wearing jeans to balance both worlds. But I wouldn't have gotten there if I didn't have a goal to be smart, casual, or comfortable, but still presentable. And then finally, even when you look at, maybe you, you found someone you really like and you want to take them on a date. You think of where do they want to go to? 
Might they be allergic to the food and maybe a certain restaurant, although you think it's good? How could you make a really great first impression? And so all these points, again, go towards that profound statement that for every customer going through a journey, they are doing it to reach their goals. And again, this is the same when that customer is engaging with a business. So what journey maps do is that they show you as a business the journey of your customer in achieving their goals and elaborate the details of that experience. More technically put, the customer's journey map is a tool to visualize the experience of how your customer interacts with your brand, your products, and processes from the customer's point of view versus how you think that customer is interacting with your product. This is important is because it can really that's where entrepreneurs visualize it in order to know how the experience is with you in solving that problem. So the journey map illustrates all these different touch points for your customer. And it does this visually, so it's easy for you to understand, easy for you to show to your team. And most importantly, it shows you all the different points that your customer is interacting with you, whether it's your product, your business, or your service. The goal is also to take note that every tiny thing a customer does can be very pivotal to the experience when it comes to how they interact with you. Again, at my location, there are planes flying over me as well. So sorry if you hear a little background noise. Um, and again, by being able to understand all these little intricacies, that can also help you with getting hidden questions, questions that your competitors or other people in your industry haven't understood. And what these become are mystery points that enable you to solve what these mystery questions and struggles are for your customer, right? And this is where value propositions are born from. So for every company and all of you here with your with a business or part of a company, you probably have a value proposition. What makes you stand out? And the journey map is saying that I can help you identify the mystery points that really lets you sail into what makes you stand out for your customer. So as we do our journey map, we get to know what's positive in our customer's experience, what's negative, not too good, what are the neutral parts of this? And also how is this full experience happening before, during, and after the experiences with us? Also that we can get these better expectations and deliver our products to meet customers' expectations and even go beyond those expectations as well. But again, so this is a great tool and it looks like it's going to help us really understand our customers. But why does it matter to us? And why does it matter to us on this call as part of our DT series? Well, we were doing some research and going through Salesforce website um, and some data they collected in 2020. And we thought it'd be interesting to share because these are also learning sessions. So 80% of customers now consider the experience with a company to be as important as its products. 69% of Gen X customers prioritize convenience of brand loyalty. And 91% of customers agree that a positive customer experience makes them more likely to purchase again. These facts are very important because most of us think that sometimes we tend to think that once we have a product, everything is done for us. Once we have a service, we are good. We know what we want, so we want to sell it to a customer. But that's not all that matters to customers anymore. And that's what this data talks about. Customers' expectations are undoubtedly undergoing a major transformation in today's age. The information technology makes available, how much multi, how many multinationals we have entering different markets, and just the general impacts of globalization. So how brands can meet these expectations and ensure every customer's journey is smooth is more pivotal now than ever. Because customers are not just looking for function, as you can see here. They are looking for aesthetics. They are looking for the psychological effects, how it makes them feel. Things that are deeper than just where your product is. And that's what the journey map is seeking to understand. And so before I pass it over to Kelvin, I wanted us to take a look at a practical example of a journey map. Um, Spotify, how many of us use Spotify? I know I'm trying to transition. I've been talking to a lot of my friends and 
one thing I really love about Spotify is their playlist. Every time I hear someone play a Spotify playlist, I'm like, how did they put this together? Because sometimes Apple Music, you know, they need to step up that playlist game up a little bit. And so Spotify, again, is one of the largest streaming platforms to music. And it was interesting to find out during our research that part of getting there was through using design thinking tools. And one of those tools was Journey Maps. And so we decided to take that example to be able to share with all of us, showing how this has successfully worked for one of the largest music streaming platforms in the entire world. And so the big goal Spotify is trying to get to here for the customer is to add a sharing feature that allows users to share playlists seamlessly within the Spotify application and songs using third-party applications, right? So we have our customer goal as a company of what our customer is trying to achieve. And then now I'm going to go to the screen where we are going to now look at the process through which customer used, Spotify used the journey map to understand this journey of their customer. So again, they have their goal, adding a sharing feature to a digital music sharing application. And by the way, we are going to share the link to this website with you guys as well. So you can be the story. What's important about this is that been, uh, uh, using design thing for a long time, there can be some real value in your and, and songs using third-party applications. And to do this, they mapped their design thinking process, looking at all the different tools they wanted to use to understand this, starting with an overview and what Spotify's mission was, which we just went over for their goal. But before any of this can be done, again, design thinking starts from a place of empathy. So they had to start with research. One, we have customers. These customers love to listen to music. There are other streaming platforms that deliver on music, but we want to look at the sharing experience of music. So although we have that data, we need to go back to our books and look into not just the data we have on customers that listen to music, but what are the experiences with sharing this music, right? And to do this, Spotify didn't just look internally. They also looked into other platforms like Apple Music, Pandora, to see what their current offerings were when it comes to providing music sharing options, playlist sharing options to customers, to see if there was anything they were currently missing in the market, or if it was something everyone was missing altogether. And to start this research process, they developed a persona. Some of you might be familiar with a persona, some of you might not fully be, but to simply put it, it's just simply an archetype you develop out of a large number of customer characteristics that are similar within the demographic you are selling your product to. So usually you have a lot of customers and they have similarities and you put those similarities into a persona. That's what persona is. I know in more of the sessions we'll be having in the workshop, we are going to learn more about personas too. So feel absolutely free to join into those sessions so that you can find more details if you also want to know how to build personas for your own organizations as well. And so for their persona, they decided to use one for Adam Beckham, right? And because there's a lot of text, again, I've gone through all of this to make it easy for you. So I'll just be brushing through so you can just follow me and you don't have to worry about reading everything on the screen. So for Adam, his Abba, he's married and he lives in Chicago, right? This is, again, the archetype. Personal photography graduated and he started doing some things and during his time developing application he loved to listen to music and listening to music adam loves to listen to music for a lot of the parts where he's working and he's just trying to make sure that he can keep discovering cool song and keep him joining these with friends so that it's not him enjoying good cons but uh, people enjoy it as well and he can also left side we have the goat adam right so he wants to find you are he would like to have the so he doesn't have to go through the hustle wants to have a scope of music uh, broadening right have a better experience when it just comes to finding new songs um so Kelvin and the team, if you can help me with uh, inviting people into the room, I think admitting people into the room. So what are Adam's frustrations and fears? And, and please, as you're joining, can you remember to mute your microphone just so we don't disrupt the session? So there isn't a way to tell whether or not his friends are able to listen to the music he shares to them. 
So again, Adam loves to share music, but sometimes when he shares it, he doesn't really get that feedback. So he doesn't even know if it's being listened to. And if he hears music he enjoys on a different platform like a TV, he needs to use a third party application like Shazam or SoundCloud to find out what song it is before it goes on Spotify. So again, just that seamlessness. So they put this code down, which is, I had no idea that Spotify even had a share music functionality. Where do I find it? Oh, maybe it's the read dot menu thing, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason this code is very important and codes are always very important when you're thinking of journey maps is because they give you those important qualitative insights mm -hmm. that lead to bigger ideas for you. And here we are talking about intuition. I'm sure for all of us, if you get a new app, you go to your settings or you go to those three dots. And so for Spotify, this is equally what they are trying to capture. But now let's look at what he actually did for a journey map for Adam when it comes to his music sharing experience. So for them, um, in the journey map, again, like we've already discussed, they are mapping out all the touch points of Adam when it comes to how he engages with the platform from start to finish, when he visits the platform to when he finally responds, right? And they are going through the different steps, the thoughts he's having, the touch points, the different actors and people Adam is engaging with, and the emotions he's having as well, which is very important because it's telling Spotify when Adam is happy with his experience and when he's not happy. So from when Adam visits the platform, he opens Spotify, he listens to his music and he checks out his Discover Weekly playlist. He listens to selected playlists because he wants to hear similar songs. Again, he has a particular taste of music he already likes. He shares these songs primarily through the three dot feature or he selects a share option in the drop down menu, copies the link and sends it to his friend. Let's call her Grace through WhatsApp. He discusses how Grace felt about the song and then he receives a text message back sometimes where Grace is giving him that feedback. He clicks on the link or is redirected to a browser window and then he can see that feedback or open Spotify music. And then finally, after he sees this response, he can then respond to Grace and tell him, oh, I'm happy you liked the song or you didn't like the song. So he has the feedback for future songs he might want to share with Grace or she might want to share with him. But again, this is just a process. So with the journey map, we have to see what are Adam's actual thoughts during this whole process. And that's where we start to get those details. So I listen to music to get me through coding, scripting projects. So again, what his goal is, he's trying to code and he wants music to help him through the process. I like to discover weekly playlists. Sometimes I just don't want to keep searching for songs and this is perfect. So what his frustration is, is that he doesn't want to keep searching for songs. He won't play this. They are already created. So that's an easy experience for him. I like alternative rock and indie music. So now we are finding what Adam's genre is because that's every company has every customer. We do have preferences that we need to capture. I share music with my friends by just sending them a link on WhatsApp or, and he likes that that's pretty straightforward. I like that I have the option to share in a vertical display. So through your phone, you don't have to go through a laptop. It's an easy process. I would send the text after I share a link and notify. It's really annoying. So now we're getting to the frustrations. Why can't it be an easier process to share songs? And I wouldn't like to respond unless it was a particular nostalgic song. So from us putting down all these thoughts, what we start to better understand is how is Adam feeling? What's the actions he's trying to accomplish? Who is he trying to accomplish it with? And what are the frustrations we can alleviate for Adam? We can always see where it's just Adam in the process and when it's Adam and someone else. And then when we get to emotions, we can further see what Adam is curious about. So things such as how we see suggested playlists, mm -hmm how to find the translation of a song from a different country, um, to find out what his friend is listening to or what your suggestion is. We also get to see the things that can make Adam happy, mm -hmm. such as to see all the suggested playlists and the options available to him, to share a nostalgic song with a friend, to listen to that song, and most importantly, to get feedback. Mm -hmm. So from Spotify using this whole process, looking at Adam as an archetype, try to understand what his goals are with sharing music, what you're able to do is not just understand the problem of Adam, but understand how it is in terms of how it pertains to the people he interacts with and what he wants to achieve from the platform. Through this, Spotify has been able to implement a more recent music sharing feature, which enables everyday users to more easily be able to share their playlists to other, to other users and friends on the platform, get feedback more easily, do things like likes that let you know what's liked 
by the person you're sharing the music with. So you don't need to go through that whole process of WhatsApp messages and waiting for reply. Also now you can more easily just listen to the songs on Spotify rather than having to move to all these different platforms. So again, like we were saying earlier, Spotify did a lot more in this research process. They used tools like Crazy to be able to map out wireframes for this entire process and break it down into different blocks for how they wanted it to look on the application. They were able to use user happy paths where you're understanding what the journey is for the user with what you implemented. Use interaction design when it comes to looking at the actual functionality. And again, doing low fidelity wireframes where to medium fidelity wireframes where we can actually start seeing how the feature is going to look and how the feature is going to work. So again, this is just an example of how Spotify implemented journey map in their own regard to better understand the problem and the value it had for them in understanding how their users go about sharing music and sharing playlists in a more fulfilling way. So now I'm going to pass it to Kelvin, who's going to talk us, talk more about how we develop our own journey maps for our companies and bring this process into providing value for our own personal businesses as well. Uh, Kelvin, over to you. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Um, you've clearly articulated the importance of the journey map, explain what it is, and to even look to even look at a case study that's uh, Spot, Spotify participating in this journey. Um, can you give me a minute? Let me share my screen. Uh, all right. And let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can. You're good, Kelvin. Awesome. So let me put it on presentation mode and then I would continue. Uh, minutes. Uh, okay. Okay, let me share this. Okay, can I see the full screen? Yes, we can, we can see. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 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 All right. So, uh, yes, so what we just listened to, as I, as I, as I mentioned, is what it is, what the journey map is about and the importance and relevance of it. And I can clearly see how Spotify is using it to be able to make the feature that's their music sharing platform much better. I've been using Spotify for a very long time and I really enjoy it. I tried Apple Music, but <laughs> it looks like Spotify for me because of the playlist, the ability to sit down and listen to music all day long without necessarily pressing the button to skip a song. And this is because they've taken the time. This is because they've taken the Yes. I see we're starting Spotify Apple Music Wars. <laughs> we can have that conversation, conversation after. for another time exactly right. but i tell you spotify is the best if you try it for a week you're going to love it and this is because they're using journey map you see you see i don't know about apple but spotify is using it and this is because they can track and understand what's the customer what's what's the desire of that customer and be able to fulfill it so right from when the customer is thinking about music to when they listen to the music so, and then when they, when they finish that process, how do they feel? They are very much invested in that process to be able to understand it. So thank you for explaining what the journey map is and for um, elaborating the importance and relevance of it. So in this section of my presentation, I'll be talking about how to develop your own journey map. We've seen Spotify use it. You are here, you're a business, or you run a nonprofit organization, so far as to provide a certain product or service, you need journey map. And you have people that interact with you as a service, you need a journey map to be able to enhance their experience. And once you enhance the experience, the benefits are enormous from repeated customers, customer um, and purchases to increase in product and profitability and all of that. So we are going to look at how to develop your own journey map. Now, before we look at how to develop the journey map, it's important to understand that there are two types of journey maps. The first one is the developing a journey map for the current state. Here, you are developing um, you are developing a journey map to understand 
the experience of our customers as they are interacting with your products now. So it is now and it's in, in, it's in, it's in, it's in the present. Whereas when you look at future stage journey map, you are, for instance, you have a product, you haven't launched it yet, but you want to kind of anticipate what your customers will look out for as they interact with your product. It has its benefits because you want to be able to kind of anticipate what their challenges are, solve them even before you bring it to the, to, to the market for them to interact with it. So each one um, of this journey map, each one of these uh, approaches will still work for you. What I design it now, you have a current customer, you have stakeholders, people that interact with you, and you want to design a certain journey map on how they're able to derive value from what you produce, or you are anticipating that you have some, some customers and you want to develop a certain journey map for them, you would also be able to do it. The difference is that when you have a current state, you have live customers that you can go to and derive um, information, current information, and from real customers. Whereas when you're looking at future stage journey map, you are kind of anticipating it. You, you are doing it yourself and kind of anticipating what you think your audience would be looking out for. Now, these are the components of a journey map. And you will see elements of it in what Brian shared when you were discussing uh, Spotify and journey map. So nine key steps. Okay. Number one is the objective. So on your left-hand side, you can see a picture of a journey map. So I would identify the key components, I will discuss them, and then we can use this information to develop our own journey map. One is objective. Why, as a company, why are you doing this journey map? You have to clearly state it because this becomes the foundation for all that you are doing. If the, if the objective is wrong or it's not clearly stated, all the activities that you are going to do may not yield you a positive result. So state your objective. Why are you doing the journey map? Example. I am a bank manager, a branch manager at a bank, and I want to enhance the experience of the people that come to my bank and interact or transact in there. So it is clear for me that if I want to do a journey map, I want to clearly know how these people come to my, my, my bank and interact with me, clearly stated, straight to the point. So you need that. The second thing is the persona. Who are you doing the journey map? Who is the center? Who is the person that you're doing drawing the journey map or trying to draw their experience who are you designing it for so the persona is important you need to understand who the person that you're designing it for so in the same example if i'm designing a journey map where i want to know how people interact with my uh, or come to the bank to transact i want to know who i'm, I'm designing journey map for there are varied number of people different types of people that come to the bank i may decide to look at people with disability and that become my persona and maybe I can drill down to look at people who are blind. So how does the blind person come to my bank and interact with my service? Now, this person becomes your persona. You develop, to, uh, you develop more information about them. You understand what their pain points are, what their ambitions are, what their goals are, the demographic, and all of that to give you information about who this customer is. The third thing you need to know is what's the goal of this customer? What, is, what, what, what are their goals? So... In every stage that they are interacting with your service, what are their goals? What do they want to achieve? So you clearly state that. Number four is touch point. At the very various points in, in your in in, in 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 trying to achieve their goal, there are different spots that you you would they, they, they would interact with. So for instance, if I'm traveling from here to Kumasi, there are the various junctions, the police stops, the 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 various monuments that's are on the road become those touch points that I interact with. So clearly, if your customer is interacting with you, we do not only see it as when the customer buys the product from you, but even when they think about the product, they take their phone, they enter, in, they, they search for your product, they search for your service, they um, talk to somebody about it, they take a phone and then they call and request for your product, they make payments on your payment channel. All these are touch points that your customer may be interacting with or touching. And this becomes areas that you may want to take note of because then you can design a certain solution to make those touch points or those experiences much better. Number five, you need to know what emotions your customers are, are experiencing as they are interacting with your product. Are they excited? Are they happy about it? Um, what's the level of satisfaction that they, they, are, they are deriving from each touch point? 
as they're interacting with your service or trying to reach their goal. Also, number seven, you want to also capture quotes and questions. What are they thinking about? And then number eight, you're looking at pain points and number nine, improvement opportunities. Now, number nine and number eight and number nine gives you opportunity to drill down on the information that you've gathered about your customer and how they're interacting with your product and then drive insights from it. So if you look at this, this is kind of intense. Just trying to understand how a customer walks into your shop and buy something from you or how a customer goes onto your platform or onto an app store downloads your app and interacts with it or how a customer goes to the market and then buys a certain product this may look extensive but by doing it you can clearly understand and put yourself in the shoes of your customer and design a certain solution or service that not only delights them but wows and beats bit their imagination now now that we've gone through what the, the, the nine components of a journey map, let us do a breakdown. So we are going to look at how you can develop a journey map for yourself, looking at the nine points that we've discussed. As I mentioned, number one, state a clear objective for your customer journey map. Here, my objective is stated here. I operate, I operate a, a restaurant, and my objective is to attract more families to dine in my restaurant clear, simple, straight to the point objective. As I mentioned, your objective must be correct and must be right because it becomes the bedrock for all the information and all the activities that you are doing. So you must state the objective. Number two is to define who your persona is. Look at the, the category of people who interact with your product. Um, there may be similarities amongst them, but you can focus on either a certain segment or you can find one person that becomes the archetype, archetype, archetype that represents all your customers. And you want to understand who they are because they fit into what kind of journey they will, or what kind of experience they would, uh, they would have as they interact with your product. So here, you can see here, number two, my customer is Kati. And Kati is a 27-year-old woman who has two kids. The personal information I've been able to ascertain here is that Kati, age 27, needs a place to take her two kids on a Saturday night. So this is the personal information that you need to be able to have of your customer. So you've gone through the objective, you've gone through the customer information. The next thing that you want to do is to define the stages and identify the goals that your customer wants to achieve in each stage. So with most people, when they, when they are looking at their product, they are thinking of when a customer buys from me, the goal is achieved. But even in each stage that a customer interacts with, they want to be able to achieve a certain goal. So if let's say I pick my phone, I want to order for food. When I pick the phone, the first thing I want to do is I want to have information. What is over there? What's, 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 what's the menu? Like what's the prices on the menu? Um, is, is it open? Do they do delivery? These are information. And once I'm able to get information on this, one goal is achieved. So it's not just when I've ordered the food and I've gotten a hold of it. It's every stage of the journey, there are goals that your customer wants to achieve. So with depending on what type of journey map you are doing, you may define different stages. For instance, if I want to define or want to design a journey map on how um, a customer uses my, my app for the like the whole day, I will do journey map from morning, afternoon. So the stages will be morning, afternoon, and evening. But here, because the customer is coming to make a purchase, I've designed or defined the stages as four. One is awareness, which is the customer getting information on um, the product that are available that he can purchase. So he can, he can come and uh, he can find the restaurant online and then um, understand what the terms are in terms of delivery, dining, what's, what the place looks like. He wants to be aware of it. The second one is consideration. Consideration is basically when your customer is now trying to figure out why should I go for this product, okay? So you, you want, there are certain things that a customer will be looking for. So in this same example, the customer wants to find many options pricing, also, also assess whether it's kid friendly. So these are the key decision-making points for the customer. So this is what he's considering. What are the menu options? What do they have on their menu? What are the prices? And also, can my kids, if I'm, I'm planning to bring my two kids, so is the place kid, uh, kids friendly? 
where I can leave my kids and also and um, for them to play around and have a good time uh, just as I would be doing. So this is what a customer is thinking of at the consideration stage. Then you have decision and then purchase. Once the customer has gone through the, the, the consideration, there are key things that they want to decide on. And this is what's making them come to you. So my decision is that I want to give kids an enjoyable time. I also want to make, I want to have a great meal at a very good price. Those are the key decision points that a customer uh, um, is interacting with. And lastly, we have retention. We want to be able to reserve a table for upcoming birthday. These are future things that you also, the customer may also want to look at. So apart from just having your products, the customer is also thinking, do I also want to um, come back to this product or um, interact with these people and then also get this service again? So clearly define the stages in which the customer interacts with your product, not just the final journey, but it, in between, what are the key decisions they are trying to, they're trying to make? What are the goals that they're trying to achieve in each stage that uh, they'll be interacting with? Now, now that we've identified the, the goals, the goals and the stages, the next thing is to look at touch points. What are the touch points? Where do they interact with? So under awareness, customer wants to find the dining area. He wants to um, find information about the cost and all of that. What is the touch point here? Google search. They are going online to find information about the restaurant and find out whether this place is a good place for them to go. Under consideration, when they are looking at um, options and pricing, what is on your menu, the touch point is your website. So you can clearly see where the conversation is going. And awareness, they're looking at Google search to do that. And at consideration, they're looking at the website. And at decision making, um, they are looking at you know, bathroom, your parking lot. These are things that they'll be looking at. These are touch points where they'll be interacting. And also retention depends how uh, the customer is being posted. Now, all of this would, you know, as I'm going on, as I, as I keep going, the picture will become clearer why we have to identify all these key things. As I mentioned, Doing a journey map may be look laborious, but the benefits are enormous. And we'll get to that slide. Now, step five, we are almost ending it. Step five, you want to now gather data and customer feedback as they interact with each and every stage of the journey map. So what are they feeling? And the awareness, they are trying to find a cost-effective restaurant that is nearby. So they go onto Google map a Google search, they search for your restaurant, and then they are checking out for prices. They are looking at where you are and all of those things. What is the what is the emotion that the emotion they are feeling at that moment? And what are they thinking about? So here you can see they are curious. They are wondering, is this place going to be good? You know, the, that is the state of emotion, state of uh, emotion that they are in. And what they'll be thinking about is, I wonder if this is kid friendly. So these are the thoughts they are thinking about. So if this becomes uh, yeah, so this becomes something that they are thinking about. Under consideration, what are the quotes? What are they thinking about? Are they, when they are looking at your prices and your options, what is the level of satisfaction at that moment? Are they excited? Are they not, are they happy? Are they not happy? You want to be able to gauge the level of satisfaction that they are having so that you can improve it. And that is why we are designing the, we are putting together the journey map, how to make the customer enjoy the service much better. So what are they thinking about? In this example, we are looking at, so the customer is saying, this seems fancy, but good price and looks good. So this is what they are thinking about. It means that they are, not, they, are, they are not too disappointed, but they are okay. When it comes to the decision uh, making uh, stage, they are um, eager and excited because now they've made a decision, they are going to the place, they are going to interact with it. And at the end, what do they think about? How, what is the level of satisfaction when they've made their decision to come to the, the, the diner at the dining area or the restaurant to have their meal and also have their kids around? Are they satisfied? So you want to measure their level of satisfaction. Are they satisfied or are they not satisfied? Measure it. And also what are they thinking about? In this example, they are thinking, this is really good. Okay, so it means that you're doing something really good. Then you have retention. Um, how are they feeling? Do, would they want to come back again? What are they thinking about? So here the customer is saying, no, this is this is this accomplished. He has been able to accomplish something, what he was wanted to do on a Saturday. And in terms of what they are thinking about, they're thinking, are there events discounts in case I want to come here and maybe host 
a birthday celebration or something of, of that sort. So right from when you have your customer, you know, deciding, be, even before deciding what they need, like interact, before deciding to interact with the platform, uh, the platform, they have a certain need. And as I mentioned, they will go through that journey to be able to achieve it. And at the end of it, you have to be able to map it. So the journey mapping here is to be able to map right from when your customer has a problem to how they discover you, to how you are able to fulfill it. So you map the level of satisfaction, how they are feeling with it. And once you have a gauge of it, you can then decide to make some improvements. So that takes us to the last two steps in the journey map. As I mentioned, it's not just enough to gather information of your customers and how they are feeling and or not. It's important to also draw insights. How can you make this process much better for your customer? So you have step six, determine the pain points and the points of friction. As they interact with the various stages of your of your um, of the journey map to be able to fulfill that aspiration that they have, what are their pain points? Because that is where we can drill more information and then develop or develop ideas and then make it much better. So what are the pain points? So it's not just enough to just get the satisfaction, but you have to be able to understand it. So in this example, what are the pain points of Katy? She's saying no visible hours of operation and then she had to scroll, keep going, looking for information. So as I mentioned, if you take your, your, your journey map and just look at when the, the, the service is delivered and you are taking feedback, did you like the product? Did you not like the product? You will not get this information, but when you start the journey map from right when they are even thinking of searching for your, your, your product or your service, you can even be able to make some improvements there. So no clear, no visible hours of operation and hard to school to be able to find information. So that's a one pain point at the awareness stage. And a consideration, the customer is saying, this doesn't seem like something my kids would enjoy. A menu is hard to find. So these are another pain point. They're looking at menu, they, have, they want to make a decision. Is there a place that my kids will enjoy? These are the pain points that they're having. And at decision making, the customer is saying, kids seem a little bored. Okay, here they've made a decision. They've come to the place. Uh, the kids are there. They're enjoying the food. They love the food, but kids are bored. This is another comment coming from the customer. Then you have retention. What's the customer challenge at retention? He's thinking price may be the point if you want me to keep coming back. So here we can understand what the pain points are across the journey. Now that we understand the pain points, now we can go into the ideation stage where we can develop multiple ideas to make this service much better. So here, under no visible hours of operation and the customer having a challenge of scrolling and scrolling on the on Google Maps to find information, what improvements can we do there? We can, one, fully update the search results and optimize the SEO keywords so that when they enter the information, looking for a diner, or looking for a restaurant nearby and they are kid friendly, immediately the website pops up. So it's easy for them to find you. So that's one improvement that we can do at the awareness stage. And a consideration, the customer is telling that it, she doesn't, she doesn't, she seems this is not you know, something that my kids will enjoy. And the menu is also hard to find. So what improvements can we do then? So we can adapt a family friendly brand. So when you go to the, the website, you can see something that tells, tells the customer that this is a place that kids will enjoy. So right at that moment, you make some improvements, which enhances the level of satisfaction of the, of the customer. Also, you want to make your menu more accessible. So when, you, when it's the, uh, the, the, customer, the customer goes on the platform, they can clearly see um, what information you have and how they can clearly interact with you. Now that decision-making, you know, what are they saying? Kids seem a little bored. That's the pain point. What improvements can we make over there? Provide kid-friendly activities for dining area. So then you can go into the bubble and develop more ideas to make the place more kid-friendly. And our retention, price is going to be a big thing for the customer deciding to come back. So what can you do? What improvements can we put in place? Provide discount on, on days with lower sales. Now, on days with lower sales. So clearly, we've gone through how to do or, or map the journey of a customer. We started with the objective. Ask the person who you, the owner of the products, the owner of the service, 
you are a manager at a company, you have to define the objective of why you of of the of, of the, the activity, which is the journey map that you're about to do. Define that activity. That's number one. Number two, who do you want to understand? Whose interaction would you want to understand? So this is the persona. What are their goals? What are their fears? What are their demography? All of that. Do they have kids? All of this information will help you to understand who your customer is. So define objective. Number two is to get your persona, understand who your persona is. Number three, understand the various stages that your customer may be interacting with you and what the goals are. As I mentioned, if you look at the journey map at the point of where you deliver the product and take your cash, you are missing out. It's important to even look at when your customer is even thinking about a solution. Right from there to when they are even thinking of when next to interact with you again. So map the whole scope of the journey map and identify the key stages that that decision has to be made and what the customer wants to achieve at each stage. The next thing is to gather your information. How are they feeling about your product at each and every stage? What's the level of satisfaction? What are they thinking about? You can write some of the quotes there because this becomes something that you can also refer to and then now think around. So get the level of satisfaction as they interact with the various stages. The next thing is now to look at the pain points. What are, what, what are the pain points that a customer is experiencing across the journey map? Because then you can make some improvements that will make the journey much better. So this is a clear journey map. Um, if this was a longer session, we would have broken ourselves into different groups where we would kind of practice it. But we have just an hour, so this is the best we can do for now. Hopefully, if you have another session where we have much longer time, we can get our hands on markers and some cardboards, and then we would go ahead to make some inscriptions and designs. But feel free to go online to find some of the templates. We also share this document with you and practice on your own and, and see how insightful that could, that could be for you. So I mean, there, are, there are many benefits to doing the journey map. There are, there are many benefits. One is that you can clearly empathize with your customer. You can be in the shoes of your customer. Looking at an example that we looked at with the mother of two, as the owner of the, of the restaurant, I can clearly understand what my customer is going through with their two kids at every journey. I can put myself in the shoes, how they search the information. You can clearly think about it that way because you are designing it for the customer and not yourself. So you clearly need to know what a customer wants to achieve. So you have to empathize with them. Number two, you can improve the customer journey. Now that you understand the journey that a customer goes through and know the pain points, you can design or develop ideas to make the journey much better and much easier for your customer. Number three, you can identify or met user needs. So across the journey map, there may be, there may be things that, there may be points where the customer may need Certain things. So going through the journey map will help you to be able to identify all those unmet needs and, also, and, and develop solutions to be able to meet it. Number three, number four, increase sales. Once you delight your customer, they would want to come back. And if they keep coming back, you will spend less money in trying to win new customers because those customers are coming back and they will become your, 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 your source of, 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 of Marketing because they will talk to people about it because they love your product and they would word of by word of mouth they will talk to people about it and you would increase your sales. Customers will come repeat, customers will repeat, repeat their purchase. They'll be excited about it and they will tell more people about it. Number five, greater customer and employee satisfaction because when you design a journey map, it is clear what a customer wants to achieve. You can have great customers. Customers will be happy about it. Your employees will also be excited. If you are a manager or you own a company, your employees will be satisfied because they know that at the end of the day, they are delighting their customer and they are making it much, the process much better. And lastly, you can predict customer behavior. Even if you are using the future um, journey map and trying to anticipate what the journey map is or, or, or how your customer is going to interact with your product, you can then predict what their customer behavior is. So these are the benefits of a journey map. And in case you um, don't believe me in terms of the enormous benefits here, let's listen to um, Jeff Bezos. This gentleman here, should I, this man here is worth 120 billion. So maybe if you say something about customer and Jenny Map, we would believe him. So let's watch this video of Jenny Map, uh, of Be Jeff Bezos talking about why it's important to be obsessed about your customer. Number one thing that has made us successful by far 
is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer as opposed to obsession over the competitor. And I talk so often to um, other CEOs and uh, some other CEOs and also founders and entrepreneurs. And I can tell that even though they're talking about customers, they're really focusing on competitors. And it is a huge advantage to any company if you can stay focused on your customer instead of your competitor. So then you have to identify who is your customer. Um, so at the Washington Post, for example, is the customer the people who buy advertisements from us? No, the customer is the reader. Full stop. The customer is the reader. And then, by the way, where do advertisers want to be? Advertisers want to be where there are readers. So it's really not that complicated. You know, it sort of, it comes around really well. Yeah, so clearly what Jeff Bezos is saying is the single important, the, 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 most, the, the most important single thing is to focus obsessively on your customer. If you're providing this product, if you are providing a product or a service, you have to be obsessed about your customer. You want to know who they are and how they interact with the service, right from where they are even thinking about a problem to when they want to interact with you again and again. You have to be obsessed with it. That's why at the beginning I mentioned that developing a journey map may be laborious, looking at all the work that has to go in it. But then when you are doing it, the customer is excited. You can see the benefit of it. And you can see Amazon is a, it's a, a, a customer-centric organization. Even before you, you think of recommendation, they already have it. They've mapped out the whole process from when you are thinking of when you want to put that to when it's shipped to your doorstep. Entire journey map mapped out. And each point is being improved to make the process much better for you. So we will end the process here. From the beginning, Brian came in to talk about what a journey map is, being able to understand how the customer or your customer interacts with your product at various start points. We look at the importance and relevance of it, looking at the uh, Spotify example. We then looked at how to develop your, your journey map and the seven key points that you need to look at. Then lastly, look at the benefits of it. And we can clearly see that it has enormous benefits. Um, and also coming from Jeff Bezos as well. So we will, I will end, we will end the session here and then invite question and answer, uh, questions, which we'll provide answers to on how you can develop a journey map for your customer. So please, if you have a question, feel free to either type it in the, in the box or um, unmute yourself and then ask a question. Okay, so you have Selassie, um, yes. Selassie's hand up. Selassie, can you unmute and ask a question? Great. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. I think it's been a very amazing and eye-opening um, session. Thank you for that. So whilst you were going through the, the map, the one with Kathy, what I was asking myself is, are you really sure that's what Kathy is looking for? I mean, so this is um, something imaginative or you're trying to guess what Kathy would, would do. How are you sure that that is how she's feeling at that point when she's looking at your website or when she is looking for the menu kind of thing to help you, you know, head towards the right point. Um, or are you using, are you actually getting someone to go through that process and then you're asking the person how they felt about it? Yeah, so you're essentially having an interaction with the customer as they are going through the journey map and collecting that information. Unless maybe you are doing a future stage journey map where you have to kind of assume what the journey map is, it would be best to be able to interact with them and get that information because you have the journey map. You may not necessarily need to put a journey map in front of them and then let them fill it. In your interaction with them, you can clearly ask them series of questions to be able to get this information from them. So this is one way you can do to be able to collect that information. So that's, I don't know if this uh, the answer helps. No, very well answered. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have questions, contribution, insights, comments, the, the, the opportunities here. Will you share the, the template with us afterwards? Yes, that's something we can do. Brian, no, we have two templates to share. <laughs> yeah, that's something we can do.
Yeah, Kelvin, I, I can see. And yes, yes, please, we would. So we are mostly just trying to put the information together in sort of a workbook. So it's a lot easier for you guys, not just to learn it on your own, but they are actually like blank spaces for you to create your own journey map like work tools that you can actually use inside so we, we would be sharing it we're just trying to put that together so it's more actionable yeah i have a question good evening everyone yeah okay so my question is sometimes um when let's say a business is trying to use the journey map to kind of really understand <clears throat> how and what the experiences of their customers are if you find yourself in a situation where you are using this in a workshop, what do you recommend? You, should we let the business bring along one of their customers to sit in that session to draw the initial journey map and then improve it for the future? Or the employees could as well play proxy and use it. I and and the employees could as well play proxy and draw the journey map. I'm asking this so we um, might get some kind of balanced view from you yourself as the someone who uses it. Okay. I'll attempt to, I'll attempt to answer your question and then Brian can also do some addition. Um, so for, for, for that, I mean, the best thing is it would be nice to, um, to bring your customer along because then you can get the information from the horse's own mouth. But then when you don't have it, then you can do your process. But it's important for you to go back and interact with your customer. So if let's say we are having a session and you are bringing your business case, we would want you to do, think of, I mean, design a journey map in the future stage, which is looking at anticipating or visualizing what you think the ideal journey map would be for your customer. Then you can go back and then kind of compare what you were thinking about to what your customer is actually experiencing. That could also give you some opportunity to see the differences here. So it'd be good to um, bring your customer, but I mean, at that moment, right. you have to have information. Mm -hmm. and then you back. I put this back where they're supposed to be. Backwards. Yeah, Brian, I don't know if you have something to add to the, the answer that I gave. Okay, I think Brian is. Um, yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, 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 Eugene. Yeah, so you you will need to probably go back. You do a proxy, analyze it in terms of what's that do journey map. But you will need to go back and get real information on the ground. More questions. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a question, Kevin. Uh, so great job, uh, Kevin and and Brian. I love the energy and also the level of detail. Um, my question is about the emotional uh, tying of experiences. If maybe you can throw a little bit more light on on the relevance of that, and you know um, why it's important for designers to maybe track track the emotive components of of, of the journey of the experiences. Sure, sure. So. I mean, the emotions, level of satisfaction, quotes, those sections fall under when you are gathering feedback from your customer. You're trying to understand what they are thinking about. Now, one way or the other, if the customer is not satisfied, the presumed or assumed, or it's the feedback, the, the end goal is that they may not want to, they want, they may not want to interact with your product again, or they may yeah, give bad reviews and all of that. So and under your level of satisfaction, you are capturing the emotion. So it's not just words. You know, you are capturing emotion. Are they excited? And these things also help you to be able to ideate properly. You can know where the level of emotion is. Not just, was it good? Was it not good? And usually, we, if you look at here, we have smiley emojis here. And, and this helps to be able to plot where they are. But once you know where their emotion or where their level of um uh, the emotional state is, then you can know how you are developing ideas to make either whether it's a, if the negative emotion becomes a positive one. So if you look at consideration, this example, the cat is disappointed. Why? Because, I mean, she's looking at the place and she thinks that this place is not kid friendly. 
So at the consideration stage, looking for menu, looking through the menu, and looking at the area to see whether it's um, friendly, just thinking, I'm disappointed in this space. And it's because of this. So it's not just to say, oh, I'm not happy about uh, um, the place is not good, but also to be able to capture where the satisfaction is on, 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 on a certain level. And then you can look at how best you can improve it. I don't know if I've answered the question very well, Dr. Gordon. Um, if not, too, you can not also share some light on that. No, that's, that's great. I think I think you 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 nailed it. I think you nailed it. That what you reminded me of, though, is that um, you know sometimes there are also industry uh, industry emotive elements at some stages, right? So, for instance, if you want to get a bank loan, um, you everything looks easy when you are filling the paperwork and all of that, but then very soon you realize that the terms of conditions are, are hidden or most, more, more uh, not, not as favorable, right? And for any bank, it's the same, you know? So at that point, the customer is typically disappointed. And, and so if you're a financial service provider, you know that that's an industry emotional, uh, emotional reaction from customers. It becomes a question of how do you uh, um, set yourself apart by being the financial service that, that changes that in in emotional reaction or being the service provider that does it differently, you know. So I think you know it, but this is just what it reminded me of that I wanted to add. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thank you for the contribution too. Thank you. Um, any more questions, contributions? Um, we are planning to ramp, wrap up. So if uh, you have a question, feel free to either type it in the, the, the chat box or unmute yourself and ask um, or show by hand, anyone. Um, all right. Um, looks like there, there are no questions. So um, before we take feedback, um, co concluding remarks from Dr. Gordon, um, I want to mention that um, I mean, design thinking, we do not only have these sessions, but we also uh, provide consultancy services. So if you want to design a journey map like this for your organization, it's very, you know, and derive the benefits out of it, you can reach out to design thinking via email, designthinkinggana at gmail.com, or, or you can reach out to Brian or me via email, and we would um, spend some time with you to see how we can develop this for either your organization or take you through some form of training. Yeah, that would help. Um, close your remarks. Brian, I don't know if you have anything else to say. Dr. Gordon, anything from, from your side? As we bring the- Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think I'm good. Uh, thank you for helping out with the Q&A, Kelvin. Um, again, we are, I am at the session today uh, for Women Entrepreneurs in West Africa, where we're also doing a lot of exciting lightning workshops on DT tools and talking with a lot of incredible founders on how they can better innovate their products and design them for customers. So. Still happy I was able to join um, and thank you for just coordinating at the end. It was great to have you guys join again, all the repeat people who joined this session. Um, and next week, there are going to be new faces. So beyond seeing me and Kelvin's face and hearing our voices, there'll be some of the excellent people in our team that would also be presenting on new and exciting topics in the DT space as well. So I look forward to joining those and being in the audience with you all. And I, I think that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you guys for making the session and we hope you got value from it. Do feel free to connect with us through the avenue Kelvin shared and have a lovely evening. Uh, that's what I have to say, Kelvin. Thank you. And Dr. Gordon, anything from your side? Oh, thank you so much, Kelvin. Uh, again, you and Brian have raised the bar uh, for all the facilitators, I'm sure. Uh, it, it's a good, it, it's good, right? Because then it means that um, everybody has to try really hard to uh, not only do an awesome presentation as you guys did, uh, but also, um, you know, bring a lot of um, practical context to it as well. Um, so thank you for that. And I think uh, Kelvin, you, are, you already made the point that what we want to do is to be able to help businesses with, uh, these tools. So um, we're happy to engage people who 
uh, need our help and we are also always happy to uh, welcome new people who are interested in the practice of design thinking. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Matt, for um, putting it all together. Mm -hmm. And thank you to the other facilitators. So over back to you, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, all right. right. Um, Matthew, you want to say something? Yeah. No, go ahead, Kevin. Okay. But do you have any announcements from your from your side? Anything? Um, the only announcement I probably have is um being professional. First of all, yes, I want to thank know. everyone for joining us and um Hopefully in April, we'll be having another uh, wonderful session and I'll encourage everyone to join us for that section as well. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah, so we have another session in April and we'll be sharing um, details about the program um, in, in, in before the program and we encourage all of you here to join again. Thank you very much for spending the Thursday evening trying to um, learn about design thinking and how it can help you. So have an awesome evening and see you again in our next session.